Pokemon Legends Arceus, a game that took a lot of inspiration from both Zelda and Monster Hunter. With that being said, how close is this single player experience to the Switch GOAT? That being Breath of the Wild, when it comes to its quality, now that Pokemon also has the combination of riding, climbing and gliding. It's time for the first Pokemon game in Game vs Game and it is against none other than Zelda Breath of the Wild. So be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more goodness like this. Pokemon Legends Arceus has some things of a Zelda Breath of the Wild. Yes, it is shocking and that is why we're making this episode, where the main goal is to compare what Pokemon can improve in the future titles from Zelda and what the next Zelda might want to import from Legends Arceus. No doubt one here is better than the other, as one title is about catching all Pokemon, while the other is about conquering an entire world. So how do we even judge these two different but also similar single player adventures? I know, in seven categories, game world, story, gameplay, side quests, bosses, controls, and music. Where game world already goes to Breath of the Wild, let's be honest, it isn't even worth comparing Arceus, the organic open world of Breath of the Wild with its amazing physics and chemistry engine, and truly breathtaking opening area which you enter after less than five minutes even beat the switcher in this category back in 2019, so I rest my case. The entire world is at your disposal around one hour into Breath of the Wild while you are still scrolling through text and doing forced mundane sections in Legends Arceus. And even after it opens up, it's never even close, as Arceus has no dynamic NPCs even in its main hub, Jubilife Village. In Breath of the Wild, every NPC in its eight settlements has their own dynamic activity cycle. In other words, zero to one. Breath of the Wild going into the lead, leaving us with six battlegrounds where these two games are closer to each other. Having an open world bursting with life isn't enough if it doesn't come with a proper story that will truly make you feel as being the character or part of the world you play in. And here Pokemon Legends Arceus is ready for a fight, as it has a really good balance between things that happened a few or many years ago but where nearly the entirety of the story unfolds as you're dropped into Hisui by the god of Pokemon, Arceus. This opening is very similar to Breath of the Wild, as it starts with a golden glowing light and a divine being summoning you. No doubt, Legends Arceus took some inspiration from the opening minute of Breath of the Wild. And both have a very familiar start, with a simple task. In the case of Pokemon, it is to seek and catch all the Pokemon and return back to God in heaven. This one is soon expanded as you start working for the Galaxy team and are tasked to complete two primary tasks calming down five glowing frenzied nobles and catching and battling enough Pokemon to reach the spare pillar where you go through two final bosses to have a little breathing space between. In Breath of the Wild it isn't very different as you're tasked by both the Divine Princess and the spirit of her deceased father to reach Hyrule Castle and destroy Ganon. That and freeing the four divine beasts, challenging four dark red blights of Ganon before going for the main culprit who is in many ways a fifth blight before the final boss and the credit roll. In both cases, you are a person from a different time than your own and where only certain individuals lived in a similar world as you did. In Arceus, you, a person from the future with your smartphone, is dropped over 100 years back in time by God and has to adapt to a less developed wild world filled with more aggressive Pokemon than in any prior title. And your only tool from the future is your Arc phone that Arceus upgraded to send you messages, lets you check the map which you gradually fill out as you visit new areas and log your progress. In Breath, on the other hand, you are a person frozen in time for a hundred years and wake up to a post-apocalyptic world where wilderness has reclaimed the once thriving kingdom of Hyrule, which now lays in ruins. Your only proper technological tools come from the ancient Sheikah and other than that, you're on your own. 
an iPhone and an iPad. There are definitely similarities here in world building and where both are in many ways handed to you to the closest equivalent to God that you can meet up with at the end of the game. So what is the difference? The way the story is told in Arceus, things have indeed happened in the past, but the human and Pokemon relations evolve in key moments. Both games have companions, aka champions and wardens, that follow you to said boss, and some character development is found in both cases. It is just that Arceus has far more of it, including conflicts between wardens, but also love stories. This game takes its time building up what at the end of the game is a very satisfying story and where none of the story cutscenes take place in the past. You are told about past events and characters, but the story revolves 100% around your interaction with the NPCs of Arceus, and thus it creates far greater attachment as one key cutscene is followed by a very exciting gameplay sequence right after. Personally. It is here where I think that Breath of the Wild dropped the ball with powerful and painful memories. It is just that it took place a hundred years ago, and there is nothing we can do in those cutscenes. With that being said, the story of Arceus has a big flaw, namely dipping to black instead of animating physical actions from key NPCs, ruining immersion in the process. The story up to the first two legendaries and the main credits of the game is very good, but the post game which focuses entirely on some of the most powerful ancient and legendary Pokemon in the franchise is just miles ahead of any storytelling that Breath of the Wild provides. Like seriously, it is that good. Combine that with multiple setbacks and plot twists throughout both the main quest and post game, plus a truly amazing climax that ends on a massive high note for completing the Pokedex and you see what I mean. It is 1-1 as Pokemon Legends Arceus takes Battle 2, despite numerous shortcomings when it comes to the animations of story NPCs and cutscenes, but at the very least it isn't fragmented and bare boned. Though there is a reason for that in Breath of the Wild, which brings us over to… An open world game with an amazing world and story will never become a masterpiece unless it provides great gameplay. Luckily for Breath of the Wild and Legends Arceus, this is where the two games have evolved the most from prior installments in the 35 year and 25 year old franchises. Take Breath of the Wild for instance, this game changed what we define as an open world by turning it into an open air organic experience, where many elements of the world we are in can be impacted by interactive physics and commands. A perfect example of this are the key mechanic of the game. The Sheikah Slate, which allows you to freeze objects and enemies in time, lift and throw giant metal crates, walk on water, and throw proximity bombs. All of these mechanics are instrumental to conquer the wild and dangerous world of Hyrule. On top of dodging enemy attacks for devastating flurry rushes, or firing arrows mid-air for arrow time focus. The gameplay in this next level Zelda and open world game is as fluent as it gets, and the world is at your command, unless it kills you with lightning strikes or rain. Yes, we haven't even talked about the greatest game changes yet. Climbing, jumping and gliding. Three revolutionary concepts that removed all previous boundaries found in the Zelda series. Thanks to these two abilities and being able to chop down trees, mine minerals, upgrade a long list of apparel and so much more, this game simply surpassed every game prior when it comes to gameplay, including a long, and we mean a long list of weapons and sheets. Though there is one flaw, and that is weapon durability, with no way to fix them, which obviously doesn't exist in Pokemon Legends Arceus. Instead, you can waste numerous Pokeballs, but whenever you throw one of these balls, you're taking a risk. And besides, in this game, you don't even have to buy new Pokeballs, as with the right materials, you can craft them. Something that you definitely cannot do with the weapons in Breath of the Wild. When it breaks, it breaks, and the best you can do is throw the glowing weapon straight into the opponent's face. In Pokemon Legends Arceus, you don't have this issue. The same goes with struggling to climb when it rains. And there is also a far greater variety of opponents, I mean Pokemon, and each of them can attack you in a different ways, ranging from charging, electrocuting, poisoning, and so on. The wild monsters that you aim to defeat or place in your pocket are terrifying creatures unless you sneak up on them for a backstrike attack. Obviously, you can do the same in Breath of the Wild and are even encouraged to near enemy camps as archers have horns to warn the rest of the defenders of your presence. Stealth is a viable and perhaps the best option when your aim isn't to destroy but collect. And both games encourage you to collect resources of all kinds and to use them to increase your survivability. 
Legends Arceus for crafting different types of Pokeballs and potions for your Pokemon, but also collecting food or materials that can be used to increase your chances of catching more tricky Pokemon. In Breath of the Wild, on the other hand, you can cook food by collecting food, something you cannot do in Legends Arceus where you eat Benny's Potato Mochi throughout the main quest. You can also enhance your armor by visiting a fairy fountain and offering the right material, and they will offer their love and clothing slash armor power in return. But then again, in Legends Arceus, you can customize yourself to a greater degree and are even encouraged to do so as the side quests help you both complete the Pokédex and gain new options in the main hub, Jubilife Village. The main quest even revolves around a young hairstylist taking over the town's barbershop, hinting at how you can transform the crown on your canvas. Breath of the Wild also has a similar feature with dyeing clothes in Hateno Village, where you can't change the length or color of Link's hair, which obviously makes sense due to the pre-rendered story cutscenes and true ending of the game. Now, since we're excluding combat, seeing that one has a dynamic combat system and the other is turn-based, there isn't much more we can compare, as despite similarities, it is clear that Breath of the Wild has to take this category, as we have almost covered everything that Pokemon Legends Arceus has to offer, namely customizing yourself in the village, crafting, taking out your Pokemon to sit next to you, sneaking up and roll between Pokemon, luring and distracting them, and then catching and or battling them is pretty much all you can do besides side quests. You gain the abilities to climb and glide first after at least 6 hours into the game if you rush it, or you have the same abilities within the first hour in Breath of the Wild. And even though gliding in itself is better in Legends Arceus, as it is more like flying, it comes too late in the main quest to have a similar impact to the paraglider. There's no way to throw Pokeballs while airborne or falling, only fly down to Pokemon. The seamless transitions among the different noble traverser Pokemon is awesome. Voodoo is better than any horse found in Breath of the Wild. The same goes with traversing waters on Basque Legion compared to the clunky raft in Breath of the Wild. This is a clear example of what Legends Arceus does better than Breath of the Wild and which Zelda can take notes from. No doubt the traversal after you have gained all the rideable nobles is far more seamless than in Hyrule, where the most preferred mode of transport for the most is on foot. At the same time, we can't get away from there being far more to do in Hyrule and that the open world is far deeper with gameplay opportunities and challenges compared to the multi-map province divided up in areas. There is just so much more in Zelda for the same entry fee, $60, and with what sets it apart from other open world games, namely an insane detail to physics and organic gameplay which is designed by the developers to experiment with. The category goes to Zelda, and it is 2 to 1. With that being said, there is no doubt that the Zelda and Pokemon teams should exchange ideas and concepts between each other, as there are many similarities to trace here, which brings us over to... You just can't have games like these without side quests. Well, you could, but otherwise they would be very, and I mean very, empty and lack additional purpose to the NPCs. Neither of these games handle side quests exceptionally, say compared to, for instance, The Witcher 3. But one definitely handles side content better than the other. It doesn't come as a shock to anyone that Zelda is a franchise known for its side quests and side activities. We've gone on and on about Zelda side quests in other episodes of Game vs. Game, but no matter the opponent, every time we pit Breath of the Wild against another Zelda game or The Witcher 3, it tends to lose the side quest category, and for good reason. To this day, we still have trouble trying to remember any significant side quest from the game, aside from the long-winded and fascinating from the ground up and Tarrytown questline and the most memorable shrine quests. Other than that, the majority of side quests in Breath of the Wild are fetch quests and treasure hunts. While these quests are the ones strictly labeled side quests, there are other activities that will keep you distracted from the main story, such as the shrines and shrine quests. Some of the shrine quests are as simple as the side ones, but they tend to have more depth, like the stolen heirloom quest that contains a heartbreaking tale. We really wish more of Breath of the Wild's side quests and future Zelda games will be like this, but even then, they are far ahead of Pokemon Legends Arceus which will nearly exclusively come down to bring me or show me this Pokemon and I will be able to offer more photo options, clothes, hairstyles, items and so on. And yes, there are solid rewards for completing some of these quests. When the quest itself is tedious and as bare bones as it gets, then the fun isn't really there when completing them. 
At the same time, the greatest side quest of them all, catching every Pokemon species in order to face God, is a challenging but also great entertaining quest. Luckily, by simply throwing the balls, you can easily complete a long list of side quests without even knowing it. And that is a great benefit as your curiosity of catching them all helps you to both complete the Pokedex and many of the side quests. You can also have the Wisps. The Pokemon blend of a Korok seed, but in an amount more comparable to the number of spirit orbs you collect from the Sheikah Shrines. Yes, there is another detail that was definitely inspired by Breath of the Wild in this title. This category is a tough one, as neither of these games are super deep when it comes to their side activities, and though Pokemon Legends Arceus has the advantage of a briefy post game, we have to give this one to Breath of the Wild, as the side quests are far more varied in their nature, and games like these where you are likely to pour in 100 plus hours to build your character or team need variety in its side content. Yes, there are different sorts of activities you can do with your rideable Pokemon, but nowhere near the variety you can do as Link in all of Hyrule's provinces. And and that goes for the ones involving animals alone, such as a horse and sand seal time trials. On top of that, Breath of the Wild has a far more rewarding hunting stealth system where you can sneak up and tame specific animals, aka Pokemon in Legends Arceus. This ranges from wild horses where some are specific side quests to obtain a specific noble steed, while others are rideable animals that you wouldn't expect to be rideable, such as a deer or a bear. Wait a minute. No doubt, Game Freak took a ton of inspiration from Breath of the Wild's animal system, ranging from riding, and which one you can ride, and being attacked by aggressive types like wolfos, and hunting almost everything non-human or monster. It is this type of depth and interaction with Pokémon that we hope to see in future Pokémon titles. At the same time, Zelda could definitely benefit from a similar post-game structure as offered in Legends Arceus. Still, a rather clear win for Breath of the Wild here, so 3-1. Over to... Pokemon Legends Arceus has more story bosses than Breath of the Wild, and surprisingly, the challenge offered is quite comparable. Partially since the gameplay design of frenzied noble Pokemon and the Blights of Ganon are nearly one and the same thing. In one case, you have glowing nobles who attack you as a trainer with powerful attacks of the noble, while the Blights are malice red monsters who use the same attacks as the deceased champions used. There is definitely a connection between the two, including overworld bosses. The bosses in Breath of the Wild can be found spontaneously in the open world and at the end of dungeons. As mentioned, the puppet Ganon you fight have different powers, but are visually similar to one another, making them not very interesting. Especially disappointing when other Zelda games are known for the variety in their bosses. The more interesting ones can be found in the open world, like the Stone Taluses, Hinoxes, Guardians, Lynels, and Muldugas. They all have to be taken down in different ways. If you go in unprepared, and then in particular in the first few hours of the game, you will lose hands down. Pokemon Legends Arceus has a similar structure of scripted bosses which in many ways include the main quest story of Cheria. Only instead of destroying the perpetrators and freeing the spirits of the victim, you are using bombs, the favorite food of the glowing noble Pokemon you want to calm down. Unlike Breath of the Wild, these bosses can be defeated both with the help of Pokemon in turn-based battle, or by dodging attacks by rolling around with the Y button as a human and continue lowering the bar even without pulling out a single Pokemon, all thanks to the magic of balls. This is a type of option that would be interesting to see in Zelda, having a different way than combat to defeat the boss, though in a way you had it with the runes. You could say that Pokemon took Zelda's missed boss opportunity of clearing malice of corrupted champion bosses to free their spirits and went for it with the frenzied noble. And we love it, as at the end of the day, the Pokemon in front of you is not the enemy but a noble that you have volunteered to calm down. Then you have the alpha Pokemon, which are obviously the overworld bosses, which come in far greater variety than what Zelda was able to offer through its four official overworld bosses, and two additional mini boss types, Linos, and the alpha Pokemon deserve to be compared to them, as their attacks are ferocious, especially from high level Pokemon like good old giant Garchomp. Since this isn't the gameplay category and turn-based versus action comic cannot be compared, we will say that Pokemon did a surprisingly good job with its bosses especially the final bosses of its main quest and post game. Zelda can learn from Pokemon Legends Arceus in providing exciting and varied final boss fights that are super exciting to overcome and with the option of doing so in multiple different ways. The boss category for its variety in both combat and types goes to Pokemon Legends Arceus. So, 3 to 2.
Here we have a clear winner, as Breath of the Wild's soundtrack doesn't even get close to the top of the list when compared to the rest of the Zelda games. So why would it top Legends Arceus, where music is a constant part of the gameplay and where excellent music surrounds you at any time, in and outside settlements? It doesn't, as music is one of Pokemon Legends Arceus' strongest suits. It is everywhere and it enhances the story at key moments, while adding the right mood and tension when throwing Pokeballs or entering a battle screen right where you stand and move around. Yes, that's right, you're not being taken to a different battle screen, you're actually battling within the maps. There are emotional tunes both in cutscenes and outside of it, and where the animations are non-existent in many cases of the story of Arceus, that can definitely not be said about music a truly great ensemble of tracks which follows you throughout all areas, all the way to the absolute highlights on the Temple of Sinnoh, with some true reimagined classics. Breath of the Wild does have cast, but despite this talented musician, the overall lack of music, or more specifically on the using it, is its greatest downfall, as it shouldn't come as a surprise that the soundtrack in Breath of the Wild is heavily underused, and one of the prime instances to what Breath of the Wild 2 can build upon, especially when the game didn't even include the best trailer theme of all time the Nintendo Switch presentation track, which is simply not present and is instead exclusive to Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. We love both soundtracks, which are surprisingly similar in the style and tone, but what determines the victor in this category is the use of its music, which I, as a Zelda veteran, prefer to hear unless I'm hunting some animal and need to hear where it is moving. Legends Arceus simply knows when to play the right music. Battle 6 music goes to Pokemon Legends Arceus. So we have a 3-3 three three draw before the final category, which we need to be brutally honest and say that we never expected to have in this game versus game. But don't worry, we will have a clear winner after the final category. By comparing these two games, right off the bat you can tell which one of them is less frustrating to control, but where in both cases you find some features that are better in one than the other. Breath of the Wild feels far better than any other Zelda game, and part of the reason why is because of its controls something Nintendo has mastered since the late 90s for 3D Zelda titles. Link feels great to control. His actions are responsive, and right away he can climb, and after leaving the Great Plateau, glide anywhere he pleases, making world traversal that much more fun. This also carries over to combat, where even the most difficult enemies feel like a fair challenge thanks to the controls. Pokemon Legends Arceus controls are definitely an improvement and the first person immersion feature triggered by pressing down ZL is something I never knew I needed as part of the controls of a video game. Well let's be honest, there are a few reasons why Breath of the Wild controls so much better than Legends Arceus, as you need that in a greatly varied open world with no barriers outside of stamina after you leave the Great Plateau. Both have a solid lock on feature, one targeting Pokemon and the other enemies. But Link is so much more responsive in nearly every way, apart from in water, as Basque Legion controls like a dream. But other than that, Link's ability to walk at different pace, climb and leap when necessary, and the list goes on and on, shows just how much further the Zelda team is compared to Game Freak. Or more specifically, how much more of an organic experience Breath of the Wild is, also when it comes to its controls. We could go on and on but I think our point has been made. Breath of the Wild is the victor in the battle for controls and a rather deserved 4-3 total victory, though it is closer than expected between the Nintendo Switch's first big game in 2017 and its first big game in 2022. Be sure to leave a like on this video, subscribe as we are closing in on 300,000 and a big giveaway and press that shiny notification bell for all notifications. Finally, a big thanks goes to all of you watching and our patrons, and in particular, our role producer, Charles Shush. You rock. Please enjoy one or both of these two awesome videos.